So hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Steam Controller. Does it say, solve the age-old problem of mouse and keyboard only games on TV? Okay, so for this guy we're going to cover a couple of videos I got coming up first. The weight of the controller compared to the Xbox 360. I don't have a PS4 or Xbox One otherwise I'd be covering that. Um, we're going to cover, uh, how to configure the thing in Steam Big Picture mode, and then finally some gameplay, and then conclusions on the controller. So, so when you first get your Steam controller and it comes in, which I got mine through Amazon, it just comes in this plain blue box, which I really like because it doesn't come in the stupid plastic that all the other controllers come in. Here you can see the bottom telling you what the controller comes with, USB cable, uh, dongle adapter to batteries and like a little thing so you can extend the wireless signal out further. I guess it's sort of like a dock. And here's the back of the box. Pretty plain compared to other controller setups and video game stuff so uh, just plain simple valve stuff. Nothing too complicated there. So once you open the box inside is revealed the steam controller right away inside this like recycled paper mold that they made with the steam logo embossed on it it's pretty nice uh, underneath is the batteries and the dongle the batteries do typically come wrapped you know like in a little shrink wrap thing or whatnot I've already opened it to review it ahead of time underneath is the documentation and the little sleeve for the like little extender dock and then the USB cable So here's the cable, it's about six inches and it terminates in a micro USB and you can use it either to help extend the wireless range or plug directly into the controller if you don't want to use batteries. So here's the front of the controller with the two touch pads, the front and back button, the Steam Jewel analog stick. At the top here, we have the micro USB that plugs in. Uh, then you have the two triggers, they're double throw, and the two bumpers. So the two triggers are double throw. It has an analog part and a click at the bottom of it. So on the back here, we have the two paddles or grip buttons. And they have a very nice satisfying click. And on the bottom here, we have a little slider switch that releases the battery cover. And when you do that, it just pops off and it use, uses two AA batteries. They just go inside the handle with the positive terminals uh, pointing down. And when you insert them in, there's like this little button. It just like kind of like pops out. So when you need to take them out later, they release. Uh, mine kind of was weird where one battery went in and out really easily and on the other end, it was really stiff and hard to get in, so. So the controller itself, the face buttons are smaller than the Xbox controller, which has got quite large face buttons, but I didn't feel like they were too small for my thumb to hit. Uh, consistency of the presses were pretty much on par with what I'd seen with the Xbox controller. Same thing with all the face buttons. And the main thing was is the bumper buttons and the two Steam pads, the touch pads, which actually do click down were uh, really nice and clicky, had a good tactile feedback. So here when you press the Joel button it has a nice white light behind it and it will do this until it connects to the dongle and it will also do a similar flash but with a different pattern when the controller's firmware is updating. So I tried the controller both wired and wireless and I couldn't perceive any delay between either one so most of the time I ended up just going using it wireless. So here's this uh, Steam Controller's wireless dongle, and it's pretty good up until about 30, 35 feet. Anything after that, it started dropping out for me. So here I have the cord plugged into this little dock thing for the dongle, and this is just there to say, like, if you got like a really thick case or something's interfering with the signal, you can kind of move it away so you can get a better signal and this really helps out like when I'm playing on my TV in my bedroom I can kinda get it like out far enough to where I can get the signal so some people were saying the Steam controller waits off so here I have my daily driver this is a wired 360 controller 
and I was going to compare it to the 360 controller, and this is at 7.8 uh, ounces, and this is on a kitchen scale that I have that's pretty sensitive. So here you can see we have the wireless 360 controller. This is probably one that's a little bit more popular in PC, and this is without the batteries in, and it's saying it's between 8.2 and 8.3 ounces in weight. So this time around I put the batteries into the 360 controller and it was reading between 9.9 .9 and uh, 10 ounces in weight. And it kind of fluctuated here back and forth. Now for the Steam controller without the batteries in it, and this kind of shocked me, it was showing 8.3 ounces. The same weight as the 360 controller without batteries. So then I went to go put two bat double A's in and I really wasn't shocked after that finding out. 10 ounces, just like the 360 controller. So it's quite obvious to me that Valve put in a lot of work to make this feel weight-wise and balance-wise the same as the most popular controller on PC up to date, which has been the 360 controller. Okay guys, so here you can see we have the uh, controller up and ready to go. I'm gonna show something real quick. So let me shut Steam off here or close it. All right, so first thing I wanna show is um, with the controller, when you uh, first click it on, it's going to make a noise. So <clears throat> it's like a little beeping noise or Atari noise. If it didn't make it in the microphone, I'll record it later. But um, anyways, we're going to show how to use this thing real quick and what you need to use for uh, for your configurations and stuff. One of the things I don't like about this controller right off the bat is you need to be in Steam Big Picture mode to really take advantage of it. And that seems to have been the case for a few other things, which I'll talk about since we're in big picture mode anyways. But, uh, as you can see, like right now my mouse is controlling the screen. But if I go over here, it's got kind of like a trackball mode for the screen. So I can actually like trackball over to the other monitor and whatnot and back and forth again. And then if I say like, it's basically like you're hitting trigger for your left click, which is kind of reversed and weird. So like if we go to my Twitter real quick, You'll see that I can scroll down, scroll up using the other one. And it does make some noise. Um, it can be pretty noisy. I can even hear it through my headphones. But I've just, I'd just i rather have a little bit of noise than no click. And I've just gotten used to it. So, <clears throat> Alright, so to bring up Steam, I hit it once. It's going to bring up the desktop Steam. There's really nothing I can do with this controller here. I can start the games from here. And it will use the last known configuration, but if I need to go in, change sensitivity or something like that on the fly, I can't do it from this mode. So that's kind of where this thing's like the downfall. And again, it's gonna start at big picture mode. All right, so from here, you can see there's no mouse or anything. It just wants you to use the thumbstick. So it's just all I'm doing, the control, everything is thumbstick. I can't even use the D-pad, which is kind of weird. So from here, there's a few things right off the bat. One is um, if you go to uh, minimize big picture, turn it off, turn it off steam, or you can like restart the computer and all that. There's a new option now for turning off the controller. So if you do that, let's see, controller beeps, shuts off. Let's just bring it back up. One binding that I think is pretty awesome with this. So we'll go over our installed games. Do, 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 do. Looks like Broforce got an update. Excited to try that out. So we're gonna go Hotline Miami. Because I think Hotline Miami with this thing is freaking sweet. <clears throat> so one thing I want to say right now is going in here, uh, configuration, the way I found it, and I like my configuration very much, so hopefully it doesn't screw it up. Uh, yeah, there we go. So you have a few ways of doing this. So when you go into configuration, it's going to bring up this menu again, or this binding screen. If you hit the X button down here, you're going to get a few things. You're going to get a recommended, which it says the developer is not recommended it for this game yet. You can get personal, which I basically took this guy at the very top and fixed it to the way that I like it. And then you've got community and then you've got templates. The templates for Steam controller right now are all made by Valve. Um, so you basically got gamepad with high precision aim. And what this does is games that support both mouse and, and controller, uh, 
as long as they can kind of like coexist and not have any problems switching between the two, you can actually map the mouse cursor to this and then use the rest of the controller as the gamepad. And that's the way I actually prefer to do it. Then you got a uh, gamepad with camera controls. So what this is, it's still a virtual right stick like on the Xbox, but it's emulating a mouse. So the actual input is for the analog stick and it emulates a mouse on it. It's kind of weird how it does it. So you got gamepad and gamepad is just emulating the Xbox controller. I don't typically like the emulation of the stick on here. It has sort of like a pattern called aggressive, which we'll show in a little bit, but and then keyboard and mouse. So it's taking all the keyboard stuff, mapping it to different layouts, like Waz is mapped to the thumbstick and whatnot in this. And this works for games that don't support gamepad support. So it's actually a pretty good place to start when you're setting it up. So up here for your personal, you'll see that I have for Hotline Miami, I have uh, up, left, right, and down, and up, what right, left, and down, WASD, uh, mapped to both of these. And I've got Escape and Return, since those are like two menu buttons you need down here. And then right here on the mouse, we got quite a few things going on. We got our uh, option there, set the mouse, we got the trackball mode on, set the medium. And we got our rotation right where we like it. And sensitivity a little bit more. Because I, I think the sensitivity for me is not quite up as high as I'd like it for the controller. And then we got the haptics on medium. Which means it's going to give you more of a sensation that there's something weighty in there. Moving back and forth like a ball or whatnot. Um, it can be other things too. It could just be like a clicking sensation or whatnot. Uh, some games when you pull the triggers you can actually make it so there's like a haptic click and feel inside the controller. Uh, you can invert access and whatnot. We'll get into this mode shifting in a minute. And then trackball friction, I'll explain that. This one I don't understand. I've tried going all the way down the slider, all the way up the slider. I don't feel a difference. I don't know what it is. So mode shifting. You can actually mode shift by assigning one of these buttons and have it do an entirely different layout. So say like you want it to do scroll wheel then you can make it run like a scroll wheel and you can actually add like a clock word, uh, clockwise binding, counterclockwise, whatever or you can go joystick camera or mouse or whatever you need it to be I'm gonna go ahead and shut that back off and then you got advanced settings down here advanced settings are gonna do a couple of things so on the right touchpad you have one option that you don't have on the left touchpad that's pretty interesting. That's right here, double tap. So you can assign any button on the mouse, keyboard, or Xbox style controller over here and have it pick up as a double tap on the touchpad, which is pretty cool. And you can actually name it and whatnot. So like we could sit here and like call it, uh, I don't know, just for fun. You can see on the uh, keyboard here, here, let me get rid of my camera. Na, na, na. All right. Back over here. You can see I can use the touch pads and go through the keyboard. And all I do is I click down the pad to click in the letter I want. And then for symbols, I can do the uh, little right paddle underneath. And for caps, I can do left paddle. But we're just going to go ahead and through that. Uh, you can also make the controller beep for double tap. So let me bring the camera back up here. Alright. And we got everything from edge spin radius, edge spin speed, whatnot. So lots and lots of different options to mess with here. And there's one option here that doesn't seem apparent. It's this one right here. This controller actually has a motion sensor built into it, which I didn't know about. And it's really, really, really good. I'm actually shocked how good it is. So, uh, pretty amazed. Uh, some people have unfortunately decided to use it as like a precision aiming, which I don't have a problem with, but usually it's like tied to, you have to have your thumb on the touchpad. And I don't like that because then your thumb is also adding an input to it. And you get this weird thing where you look at the cursor and it's kind of like jittering on the screen. So I preferred like a shift mode where I can have my thumb off this, just use that, and then it gets rid of that jitter altogether. So you need to make sure that you're not using both inputs at the same time. Looking at you, Mikey, and in insurgency. 
So speaking of insurgency, we're going to use them as an example right now. There are some <clears throat> developers out there that are already working on making their own controller layout. And this is a good example of one of them. This is the uh, recommended one, the official configuration for insurgency. So here you can see they have uh, quite a few things going on here. They're using the uh, double dual stage trigger here. So like when you say are aiming down sights, you use the soft pull or the analog part to aim down sights and you do the full click to hold your breath before you shoot. So there's some cool stuff like that. They are one of the ones that unfortunately have the gyro map to look. So for this, I really have to just sit here and go none and shut it off because it's it's that bad but after I would say uh, getting it lined up the way I wanted to which really honestly let's go here and there we go getting it set up the way I wanted to and then you set the rotation back I tried that the other night it didn't work out so great so after getting the sensitivity and the motion sensing and all that stuff mapped out the way I wanted uh, I did pretty good in Uncertainty. Now, Uncertainty is not a fast-paced first-person shooter, but I was getting, I got in one match on top of the leaderboard with a bunch of people using mouse and keyboard. And a second time, uh, out of those two matches, I got in the top three. So between like starting that night, playing with this, and going to um, really bad from one match to the next, I did okay. Playing Call of Duty, I just suck at Call of Duty. Uh, I'm appreciative of Chris Deard for getting the game for me, but I need lots of practice, and it doesn't matter if I'm on a mouse or keyboard. I was getting on an average five kills, three to five kills with this controller, and three to five with mouse and keyboard. So there's a parody there. There's things with the mouse and key with with the mouse and keyboard I feel more comfortable with, like shooters like that, because on this I don't feel like I have the fast paced action. But since I have it set up as a dual controller with mouse input. It's still giving me sort of the Call of Duty um, uh, aim assist, and the aim assist actually helps me finish off my aim with the mouse part. So it, it does help a little bit. It's something that I'm saying I think I could get used to. Like, uh, it's, it's not terrible. Damn it, they're in the window. Story of my life. Yes! Shit. I heard the boost, I just didn't catch on it in time. That's what happens when you're old. So I've heard some people really complain that you can't play first person shooters with this, and quite honestly, I'm doing just fine. Oh, where are you? Yeah. Melee to the face, motherfucker. Alright, we'll do that. Nope, nope. I hope I can get a kill with this. So it's going to take some getting used to because I need to get used to using the entire pad, which I haven't yet. Because you can see there's a pretty good range on the pad and then getting used to flicking and stuff when I need to. So I would say it's no harder than learning when uh, analog sticks first came out on controllers. Like that's what I equate this to. Are they down already? So it'll take some getting used to. You gotta like kind of figure out where you like your sensitivity per on a per game basis. It's not gonna be the same across everything. Um, just as with a mouse, but I would say the accuracy of the mouse. I wouldn't say this necessarily has that. Um, it's kind of an in between at the end of the day. Shit, 
Oh, his head's not on right. Let's see here. Okay. Scan for next target. That just screwed up. And take the dog out. Oh, the dog took me out. So anyways, that's a good example of a game that I think works pretty well with um, the Steam Controller. I, I really like using it for this. Uh, I tried playing um, some other games like Papers, Please, FTL, and it worked phenomenally great. It's great for those types of games, and even legacy games like Deus Ex, the original Deus Ex I tried on this. So addressing the uh, cheap and light uh, comments in previous reviews I talked about, uh, people were saying that this thing's cheap and light. Now I'm flexing it, and it, it's really not flexing much. It's about as much as a 360 controller. The plastic mat feels a little bit different. It's smoother than on the uh, 360 controller. And then of course you got gloss on here, which I'd prefer not to have at all. Um, for my opinion, it's not any cheaper or lighter than a 360 controller. It's pretty much about the same. Uh, when you talk about something insane like the Xbox Elite that's 150 bucks and got metal in it, uh, obviously it's not going to be that heavy, but um, you know, it's it's pretty good. So I kind of like some of those reviews actually had me to the point where I was almost scared to open the thing because uh, so many people had basically crapped on it on the build quality and whatnot. And I figured it's a fifty dollar controller with the wireless dongle and everything. There's almost at that point I'm pretty much certain there's got to be something wrong with it. Here's the way I came away from it. If this is fifty dollars and I'm getting this kind of quality, the other controller companies are charging too much, too much of a premium. Are some caveats. These top buttons here, these bumpers, are edged out a little bit or flared out. My problem with that is, is I have to lift off the trigger to get to the button. I can't just slide up like I'm used to on the 360 controller. Uh, I've gotten used to it. It's not that bad. There's not much travel on these, and they click like mouse buttons almost. I mean, like they, it's a really audible click that they make. I like it. I, it it has good feedback. It, like it's weird because it has no almost next to no travel, but at the same time, uh, I think they angled it down just right and whatnot. I would have preferred to see it a little bit more flush with the trigger. The triggers themselves, as far as the way they fit in your finger, feel pretty good. However, the triggers don't have very much travel to them. And then there's a click at the bottom, so it's what they call soft pull. Uh, hard pull I think is what they were calling it so the soft pull like for instance if you're playing a racing game you can map like the gas to the analog part or the soft pull and then nitrous to the click at the bottom uh, same thing with like brakes you can like map the brake and then say like the e-brake to the click at the bottom or something like that the other thing um, about this controller that I wasn't necessarily thrilled with is because of the way the paddles are, they protrude out a little bit. I don't know if I'll be able to show you guys, but you can see it right there. It's protruding out. So people with smaller hands, they tend to do a bottom grip where they put their fingers around the bottom. I think you guys are going to have a hard time hitting this. I have much larger hands, so I put the controller and I palm it or side grip it, as some people say. And then I just hold it by pr putting pressure on the sides. Because of the all the surface area on the side that they have here and the way that these are kind of laid out, it feels like it's really made for side grip. The first couple days I used it, it was to the point where my muscles were actually getting sore in my hand because I was not used to even having this much surface area on a controller and having my thumb angled down instead of like up. Uh, because when you look at it and your hand's on it, your your thumb's going down. It's not going up to an analog stick like you're used to on a 360. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, I like the customizability, but if you want a controller to plug in and there's pretty much like already a lot of uh, button layouts and stuff figured out from the developers, at this point you're going to want to go 360 controller or Xbox One. That's just that's the way it is. If you don't want to deal with uh, button layouts and all that, it, this is not the controller for you. The fact that I can like change anything on here to even like the dead zones and whatnot is pretty freaking awesome. At the end of the day, like if you're using if you're like the one thing that's probably the biggest hurdle to get over is first person shooters. Depending on the shooter, something like I was playing Deus Ex: Human Revolution. 
n- not a big deal. It's not a fast-paced game. I'm able to pull off like the shots that I want and everything. And it took a while. When I first took this controller out, hooked it up to Deus Ex, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. After about, I would say, seven hours of playing Deus Ex with it and just forcing myself to use it, I got to a point where I was better with this. And I would say even to the point where the other night when I played Rainbow Six with the 360 controller because I hadn't set this one up yet, uh, going back to analog stick felt sluggish. And I turned the sensitivity up and whatnot, and it was either you were always turning too fast, or you had to deal with slow turn or something like that. That's something that is, once you get good at this, is eliminated with this controller. But essentially, you have to get, you basically just have to get good at trackball movements on this thing. Um, if you're not used to a trackball, that's another hurdle you gotta get over. So this is a controller with, I would say, a lot of different hurdles. And once you realize that, and you spend some time with it, you can definitely learn to use this. And I would say somebody with this thing that's dealing with an almost trackball or mouse-like control over the 360 controller, once they get good at this, I think they'll be able to smoke people. I was even killing people in Call of Duty, which I would say is the worst example for this thing right now. Um, But I was still able to make kills, which is pretty insane. Uh, I would not say this is going to be replacing a mouse and keyboard anytime soon. Um, I think mouse and keyboard is quite safe from that, but this is a good in-between, but it takes a huge, huge learning curve. So if you're willing to do that and try something new, um, this really reminds me of like back in the day when I first got used to any other controller, especially the biggest jumping when we went from like Super Nintendo controllers to DualShock controllers on the PlayStation with the analog sticks. Uh, You spend some time with it, and I think after Valve spends a little bit more time Kind of like uh, messing with the response curves and stuff a little bit on the trackpads because they've already been doing that. Uh, I've had nine updates on Steam, actually ten because it's now prompted me to do another one, and two firmware updates on the controller since I've had this thing in like the last nine days. So, so far I'm actually pretty thrilled with it, and I was it's a complete turnaround because of all the reviews I saw, I was expecting it to pretty bad but i'm gonna say right now it's decent it's definitely worth the 50 dollars if you want something you can play games that you can't normally play on the 360 controller even if just have it for a second controller and i think it will get better with time because valve is taking feedback and keeps on iterating and updating steam and the software inside the controller so we'll see what happens if you guys like this video uh hit like if you disliked it you know the other way down and give me your comments feedback questions i'll answer any questions you guys might have that i didn't cover in the video and you guys have a great day take her easy see you later as kyle does or i don't know everybody took the good one peace whatever bye